Well, let's move to our next topic. In Tampa, 18 University of South Florida students have started a hunger strike to protest the school's investments in companies that they say are helping arm Israel's war in Gaza. The students, many of whom are members of the group Students for Socialism, presented their demands to the USF Board of Trustees this week. The group wants University President Ria Law to publicly call for a ceasefire in Gaza. They also want USF to stop investing in five companies, Boeing, Hewlett-Packard, Lockheed Martin, Northrop Grumman, and Caterpillar, which supply military equipment to Israel. For decades, students have been pleading for divestment, and you have ignored every plea. As the death toll increases, so do USF's profits. But you know this. You know this, and you ignore it anyways. Just for the record, we don't invest in any of those companies directly, so that's not, so please don't go on a hunger strike for that, because you'll be waiting a long time. And you talked to some of the students. Uh, what did they tell you about the reasons for the hunger strike? Yeah, I, I talked to them. I learned that they're doing this to offer their solidarity for those in, in Gaza that don't have food and water. Um, I learned that they felt inspired to do this by students that came before them in the 80s, um, students all over the country who organized for divestment, which put pressure on South Africa to end apartheid. Uh, they also told me they really want people to follow their Instagram, USF Hunger Strike. Um, and I also reached out to Palestinian American friends who feel incredibly isolated and unheard. Many of them have family members who have died or in harm's way. Some of them are survivors of genocide themselves. And, uh, you know, what the students are doing, um, I think we're going to look back 30 years from now, just like we can look at the students of, of the 80s and what they did to influence South Africa. I, I think we're going to see these students as truth tellers and freedom fighters. Um, just as we think about Nelson Mandela today. Mm. Brittany, what, what's your take on, on the well, students calling for divestment and the ceasefire? The story is about 18 student, students. USF has a 3% Jewish population in their students. So if you're thinking about these 18 students versus over 1,200 Jewish students that they're going to make feel isolated and alienated if they did go along with this, I mean, that's a huge portion of their campus. And then like, the, um, like he said, they're not investing directly in these companies, right? These big colleges, corporations, they have money in portfolios who are then invested by other people, other stockholders. Um, so it's not even like the school can really purposely pull out the money from each of those companies. They're going to have to change their entire portfolio, which could harm the school in the long run. And you know, USF is up and coming. They're trying to build a new football stadium. They're trying to be on the national map. And if they're moving their money around like this, you know, that could really impact the future of all the students. Ben, do universities have, have uh, should they take a position on moral questions? And uh, is this a moral question that USF should take a position on? It's really interesting. It's, it's interesting to see this playing out in the national news, primarily focused on Harvard, uh, which its board of governors just decided the other day to change their policy to, um, uh, to basically be neutral on uh, political issues, especially important political issues uh, like this. I don't know if it's the place of a university to decide, especially a university with a you know, vast amount of different ideologies that they must represent. Um, I'm not sure though that's what the students are asking. They're just asking specifically for USF to divest in these five specific countries. It's interesting, the board chairman is Will Weatherford, who's made a career in investments. This is what he does. Uh, he's saying it's state law, they can't. They can't divest. So he's encouraging the students, uh, you know, not to go to these lengths because it's out of their hands. I'm not sure if that's actually the case. I wonder how this will play out. I wonder if USF does have something, some control over where they put their money. Jacob, to, to Brittany's point, there are lots of Jewish students on campus, as she pointed out. I imagine if you took a survey, you might find that there's a split among the Jewish community about whether or not Netanyahu's policies are correct. There are a lot of uh, students for, with Arab backgrounds and Muslim backgrounds on the USF campus as well, and they might be split too. Yeah, I mean, 
I think looking also just more broadly, I mean, the, the Hillsborough Board of Commissioners recently uh, revised their policy so that they could be able to invest in Israel, right? Miami-Dade County up their investment in Israel bonds, like after this war in a show of support. The state of Florida up their investment in Israel bonds uh, in a show of support. So I think what we're seeing is a, is a pressure point being consistently pushed, right? And these students are living right here in this community, and they're looking at an avenue in which they feel they have more control in their university. So, I mean, I, 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 I think it's, it's difficult to say whether a decision like this would be alienating. I mean, going back to the fact that the state of Florida is doing this, and I wonder how many uh, people who live here would feel opposed to what those investments are, you know? And, and, and a question to fiduciary duty, I think it's also, like, worth considering that, like, uh, the state of Florida said that it would be against their fiduciary duty to divest in Russia, and yet they're investing more and more in Israel. So I just think, like, when it comes to this, I think it's it's really in the weeds, and um, I guess we'll we'll see what happens. But to invest in Israel is taking a side mm -hmm. in the conflict. No, definitely. Yeah. I, I think I, it makes sense that the students would link investment in Israel to support of Israel because that's literally what our CFO. Uh, Jimmy Petronas said. Right. But we, we have to think about how the war started, right? There are still hostages being held. So when you're talking about, you know, these students, they feel alienated and upset, and you talk to, you know, Palestinian Americans, what about families of the people who are still held hostage? What about people who knew them? I mean, they're still there. That's what this war was about. And the students are demanding that the school say that there should be a ceasefire. So they are demanding that the school take a position on this, a political position. It's not just that they want them to divest. They want the school to stand up and say, we want a ceasefire, but they're not considering, you know, why this actually started in, to begin with. And, and the October 7th was certainly a horrible, uh, uh, assault on civilians, totally unnecessary. But at the same time, since then, more than 30,000 people, civilians, have been killed in Gaza. Like, I wonder, at what point has the war gone too far? As a pacifist, um, I'm often asked, um, even by some of my rabbi, rabbi colleagues, um, what would you have us do instead? And that assumes that um, as a, a follower of Jesus, I, I have to have another position other than, other than peace. And I happen to think that um, the, a, a position of peace uh, is the right position no matter what. And I, I think there are, there are ways that we have, can look back through history and see where conflicts even larger than this have been resolved through nonviolent resistance. And I, I, I just happen to believe that's the way. I certainly want the hostages to, to be returned, but um, I think we have a moral obligation at this point to all be demanding a ceasefire. Okay.